Fine. Yes, I, I know that I'm being recorded and we are out on, on streaming. So what is this all about? Well, in my daily life, in my daily work with my colleagues, it's a long time since uh, I started hacking and breaking things. And for, for strange things in life, I'm on the other side. I'm trying to stop the people who are breaking it up. So it's a changing paradigm for me. So I realized that things that I learned for those years and that were so complex, when you understand the four basic concepts, that's not that easy. It's not that easy. What is basic things? What do I mean by saying basic things? Deploy servers in a rapid automated way to create clusters in cloud which is not that fashionable when compared with machine learning, and to do it uh, easily and cheaply. Uh, two years ago, I started to learn that. I asked you about Rancher, because we're going to use it today. OK, I'll give you the mental roadmap. My notes is a TXT. I'm going to explain it step by step from zero how to mount a pass We open source software for free except for the machines for obvious reasons and step by step we're going to deploy a series of certain things we're going to escalate them and I'm going to start with a very uh, easy exercise, or any ex exercise, you we can deploy OpenBAS, Kali, or anything, and it is multi-environment. I say, I say, I used to say a lot of rude words, so uh, my apologies. What, what, what you said, hacking in your title? Well, yes, between inverted commas. Why hacking? What is, how many people here work in hacking, pen testing? Have you worked in hacking, pen testing? Yes. Developers, programmers, raise your hands, please. When you do the pen testing and hacking pool, you have to make an audit normally. You have two options. Either you do it in your PC or you have a server that you share with your colleagues. Normally, it's a big machine under the table. And everything is connected there, and you share things. Or the third option is that you have this in a Russian server, weird Russian server, and you have to pay. But uh, suppliers don't like that. The basic story there is that if you're a lot of people, for me, it's more than three, you have to share machines, resources, and software. The open bus nexus and the machines. If you have a Kali, you want to use it in a remote server with a good internet connection, with for scanning, etc. You have to share that with your colleagues. So that, these are bad implications. You have to do better administration. So with this problem in mind, I, say, I thought, I, if I had to make an audit, I would like to have a cluster or a, a site or a place with a click, and I would like to have a whole environment for me. I can do my scannings, my panels, the meta spray, and when I finish, I can clean it up, and I can rebuild it easily for, for if there's any need. So we have a small site, and we don't interfere with our colleagues. This is good for security. But if you do WordPress, uh, it's good to have this place for you. That I'm going to talk about hacking, but nobody does this. And once you do it, it's very comfortable to have this place for you. So this is my spam. This is my good photo. So it's a bit blurry, so that you can't really see me. My Twitter account and many other things that you could. In my name, my alias is Cron. 
Let's start from scratch. Javi, it's okay? But otherwise, uh, I don't know. I don't need to move a lot because um, I'm being recorded. I'm being filmed. What is a PAAS? It's the basic element. From left to right, you can see this photo uh, in many places. We have our hardware. We have our PCs. It, you manage. Uh, you um, do everything. Internet connection, the electricity, users, middleware, runtime, everything. You do it all. That's when you, ma you manage. Then, for the server, the IGA, well, you de delegate it. That's on the second column. Platform as a service. Virtualization and operating systems are managed by someone else, and we only do our applications, our data, it's our software. And what is SaaS? Software as a service, Gmail. That's Gmail, software as a service. So something that we delegate, and we just hire that. It's very simple. That's the level of responsibility here. So we're going to mount a PAAS called PASS. Because I, I want this to be uh, easy, user-friendly, uh, not difficult to maintain. We're doing pen-testing pen testing and hacking, and I just want to have a Nexus or a Kali. What's underneath, I just don't care. I, I want to, to, to manage just the basic elements I need, not the rest. So you know what, what Docker is? A brief definition. These are snapshots from uh, Ruta. Docker, it's the website, is a, a standardized way of packaging your software. What does it mean, really? Docker is not a virtual machine. It's not a virtual machine. For, it's not a virtual machine. Wind, in Windows, it virtualizes, yes, but it's not a virtual machine. We take our Apache, your Tonka, and Matt, and instead of to run it in the operating system, you put it in a CH root, like a, a, a package, and what are the advantages? All the dependencies that you would install in your operating system, you install it in your Docker. So you, you're not going to fill your operating system with uh, shit or with uh, spam. Uh, this is for you, and this is free, and uh, it's clean. It could be a CH root, OK? Next step. You know what is a Docker orchestrator? You can raise your hands. Oh. A couple of people, yeah. I think you are going to raise your hand too much. You're going to get bored. An orchestrator in Docker means that it uh, manages containers. What does it do is the following. We can manage our, our applications as, as CH root, and they are encapsulated. What we gain is that it's easy to make small portions, small bits and pieces, and everything runs uh, independently. With The more bits you have, the more chunks you have, you have to manage more elements. It's like at the beginning of the internet. We, we, we had too many domains, and you can't remember everything. You have lots of containers and lots of pictures. You, have, you need someone to say to you, this is uh, shut off, you, I have to reset it, I have to st restart again, oh, I, I'm getting this container and I put it there. So, but somebody has to m manage these containers. That's the orchestrator. Today, these are the most important or orchestrators. Kubernetes by Google, it's a benchmark now in the world of Docker. It's uh, easy to use, it's very comfortable, and there's somebody else who's paying, because it's Google paying for that, for that behind. Swarm 
it belongs to Docker project. It's an open project and it's got its own orchestrator. And on the right, you've got Cattle. Rancher is an American startup. They started to do this uh, control program so that this is easy to manage. And for any reason I don't know, they created their own, uh, their own orchestrator called Cattle. It's small, very small if, if compared with the other. It's kind of a, a toy that can manage 300 machines. Uh, so it's very small. It's in Java. I hate Java, so for me it's a problem. Well, regardless of Java, it has more memory requirements. Well, these are orchestrators. We're going to use Rancher by default. Why? Because it's a toy, but it's so easy to set up. Configuration is so easy. You don't need to do anything. I don't have a clustering at home with 300 machines. If I had 300 machines, it means I have a lot of customers and I wouldn't be here. I would be drinking beer. So the concept is clear. I have no more slides. This picture is a bit silly, but it reflects what an orchestrator does. They, they are there. You see subgroups with different colors. It's a logic grouping of boxes. That's Docker. What an orchestrator is doing is group these boxes in a logic way and it manages as a whole. You don't care about that. It does it for you. The blue part can be a service. A WordPress with SQL for the cache. These are three containers. Logically, there's only one application, but each one is in one machine. It's like an OBLAN. I think it reflects the concept. This is the shelf life and the slides. What is Docker? What is Orchestrator? There are seven of those. I have no videos to show you. Nothing is pre-mounted. I'm going to mount it here with you from scratch. Okay? I'm so happy that you, mean, you know what I mean. Too many compliments. I'm not lying, so I'm going to log in with my account. I'm using the Wi-Fi, please, it has to work. The login in Digital Ocean with my colleagues in Madrid. We are dealing with this together. And we're going to mount a pass to offer free service to the world. Uh, dependence analysis software and everything will be put here. Two-factor authentication, double factor. I was talking about patience. It's going to be like this, like waiting for, the, for things to happen. Is this a joke? I forgot the password. I've got too many accounts. I don't want to say rude words. That's why I'm just saying bullshit. Droplet. I'm going to explain what Rancher is. I'm going to thank once again my colleague, Raúl, who works in Rancher. And this morning I called him because I wasn't, I, I, I couldn't do something. It was a sat at 12 a.m. a Saturday and he's a saint and he helped me. Rancher 
you can um, mount pass, you, it's open source, they're quite good, they started like a test and now they're competing with other brands, Pensif and others. Where do they get the money? Consultancy. Consultancy. What are we going to do now? The code is in GitHub. First, well, Rancher has various parts. The server, it's the we that we're going to see it when we deploy it, and then the hubs which execute the actions. I am going to deploy the machines in Digital Ocean. Let's create a droplet. Do you know how to use Digital Ocean? It's for dummies. So Digital Ocean, instead of installing the machine and installing the Docker, let's take the Docker application that's already there. 10 euros. I'm paying for that. Let's mount it on the same CPD. I'll explain why. We don't want this, but we want I, uh, private IPs. Label Mac. We'll call it Rancher Server. So it's being created. I'm going to talk about the, part, the parts. So Rancher with the inter uh, graphic interface and the server part, which coordinates all the hubs. The rancher server in itself shouldn't be a part of what is executing the software because it's managing the rest. If the software manager has to do more things at the same time, the result is bad. So I chose a machine of a 1 giga RAM. Why less? Because this is in Java for the, mo for the moment. The uh, Java virtual machine needs a minimum of one gigas uh, RAM memory. So that's why one giga is the minimum. The machine is there. We're going to connect with it. I don't remember if it was Ubuntu. Perfect. We're there as a root. And how do we install Rancher? Right. It's not that difficult. I, I promised it was going to be easy. There are various ways of installing, because Rancher has a database with all the status. You can put it in another server, but everything is going to be there. Otherwise, it's going to be too long. And I speak too much. Well, I'll show you how to install Rancher. The port is 80, listening from the port 80. And let's wait, yes, adoring the code while it's mounted. And the server is a bit easy because it starts a lot of processes. And at the end, let's do a control, no user, no ID, no password. I'll change the password. Because I don't want you to see mine. Well, and we'll add execution hubs, the nodes. And then I'll show you the parts of the catalog, the stack, the users, volumes, the uh, DNS distributed. It's so easy for kids. I'm going to try to use the locals, but in fact, it's 4G, so. I'm connected to the Wi-Fi, and it's not that fast. Docker logs. I'm very impatient. Look, it's downloaded according to the operating system, its version, and all this. And at the end, when it finishes, IP port, and then we'll get it. We'll get inside. You can ask me questions with the microphone, please, if you have any questions. Uh, but not too many offenses. 
One giga and it's still it's slow. Well, I've got it in real production in another place. I have 20 hubs and it's okay. No problem. But about the private IP, why? All the hubs need to connect with Rancher. What Rancher does to communicate internally with hubs is create a uh, VPN between the hubs. It's encrypted. It's okay. What is the advantage? We can have, at least in theory, because in the practice it's not real, it's not in fact, we can have a multi-cloud pass, uh, digital ocean in one, and, and Rancher communicates that through FPN, VPN, and for you it's the same. I don't like seeing valid, invalid connection refuse. Don't like that. I'll be private. I'll, I'll be. If you put I'll public, I'll be. You can communicate it as a whole. But for performance reasons, if you communicate all the hubs through the private network with the same CPD in the same server, it's going to be faster. You will gain in security because everything goes through the private network. That's why I insisted on private network. I'm going to uh, mount an NF F F distributed NFC. Uh, if we do the public IP, it's slower. I should see, welcome to Rancher if everything is okay. Oh, look at that. Welcome to Rancher. Welcome. Good. Rancher is installed. Okay, let's do something else first. Like mobile notifications. What does it want? Authentication. Access control. This is a type of authentications that you can choose. Active Directory, GitHub, if you want to authenticate with GitHub. It's important. You can say what user in GitHub uh, wants to authentify, authenticate. Or local, you, local user, name. Cron. Password? I'm not going to say it. Okay, the authentication is done. Add your first host. The host is the cluster hubs, in fact. Before adding these hubs in the cluster, I'm going to show how it's distributed here. First, we have the environments. What is an environment? An environment is a logic unit where a lot of applications can be managed. What is an application? An application is a set of services. A WordPress with SQL, with all this, is an application. This is called stack here. You can have a lot of stacks or a lot of sets and services. And the father of the group is called an environment. You can have different environments. And you can manage the users per environment. This has to uh, will only have access to this one or to this other uh, environment. Each environment has its own machines, so it's quite flexible. If you want to do different uh, or odd things, you don't need to change this because this works okay with this. Uh, and by default, this is active here. It's, and I was telling you about uh, orchestrators. By default, the cattle orchestrator is active. You can change it. It's open here in this tag. You can play with that. You can change cattle and mesos or Kubernetes. 
messes is here for historical reasons, but you can change the, the orchestrator. What is stack is the grouping of services, the set of services. This is a system service, pillow network services, it's the scheduler. Why are they in red? Because Rancher is waiting to deploy them. But obviously, they're not deployed because there's nobody there. There's no machine where, where we can execute, execute that. It's in red. When we add a machine, all of them are, will be green and it will be dis they will be distributed. Catalog. What's a, what's a catalog? I love these double-click things that work. Rancher has a lot of double-click thingies that work. You have Apache, Zookeeper, Confluence. You have a lot of those. A WordPress. Okay, you go to this WordPress uh, template. You double click and you've got this and it ma it's mounted, it's distributed. You want another one? Well, pick one. The template is there. You have templates of almost everything. Now the hosts. To add a host, what is this asking us? Well, before uh, anything, I'm going to do this change. This is the LP in Rancher. APL, the Rancher APL. We have to say, to tell the hubs where the Rancher is. Never an IP, because if the IP changes, we're fucked. So we have three hubs. They will start running. And let's associate a domain name to this. Let's run and let's start three hubs. They, 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 will, they will start to run. These are cheaper. The, the cheapest ones. In Amsterdam, with private IP, how many? Three. Rancher. Node. Fiscuenta, genial. Vale, crea los tres. Mientras los crea. So it's it's now creating the three. We'll manage the DNSs. To manage the DNS is, I use CloudFed. Uh, strange pronunciation. And I will say why. It's free. It gives you free service because it's RAID server. RAID server. It's instantaneous. And SSL and without SSL. SSL or without SSL. It's an SSL that is not signed. But in almost all browsers, it's not ticked. So it depends. You have to put your certificate. I'm going to allocate a domain. IP. Rancher. Si le quito la IP, mejor. Vale. Añádeme el registro. We add the re register. Vale, ya estamos otra vez. Era por dominio, eso sí. No es un dos tres cuatro. It's not one two three four. That's not my password. ¿Dónde nos hemos quedado? Where were we? We were uh, adding hosts. Look, by default, it's, but this is the result. The, the first uh, host with the IP, it's bad. You have to add this uh, name by default. This is the URL that, that nodes are going to use to connect with each other. Following. Next, uh, you, I, my digital ocean, how many do they need in, to, in number of tokens? 24. You have C2, Azure, 
there's more drivers also. You have a lot of sites. So this machine by machine, it's executing Rancher. And it, you have a lot of possibilities. I love this. Okay, some other things. The first thing, the first time I saw Rancher, I didn't know what this was here. There it says, uh, a Linux machine, look at the security groups, and look at the firewall, add a label if you want to, because the hosts can be labeled. We don't have to label them now. And then it says, what is the IP of the host that you're going to register? Maybe we don't always read this, and we make a common mistake myself included, because the IP that they're asking you for is the, for the machine that you want to add, not for the rancher. It's the IP that rancher uses to connect to the host. It's completely the opposite. You can say, oh, the host isn't working because you haven't put the IP in. So we start with node 3. We put the IP of node 3 up. Here you can see command at the bottom to, that you have to run the machine. I'm going to open a session. Let's close this one because we don't need it anymore. So we connect to the machine. Now we're root and just copy and paste. And now we're going to our rancher. We said no to this one, so we're here. That's just to show you how long the node takes to appear. You can see it in real time. We've launched it. And see, you remember the things that were in red, they're now running because they've got a place to run. Oh, of course, it's all done in Mojos because they have no other room to do it. So they'll start to go yellow and then they'll start to go green. When they're in yellow, it's because they're being built, they're being created, and then they'll gradually turn green. So we've got a host. Let's now add another one. We don't need anything from this host, so we just exit. So we run this, run all of this. Now you have to wait for the nodes. If you use the drivers and hear the nodes, you can see them popping up. It's easy to use because if you say you want 25, that's fine. You get one after another. And when they've all popped up, there you go, we'll carry on. So now I'm going to close the consoles. If you realize Rancher, what it does is it goes from one side to the other and it distributes everything around all the machines that we've got. If we had 50, it would distribute it all around 50. It takes a while to start. But that's normal because it's got to download the pictures, etc., etc. 
look, some things are already active. And then network drivers are active, the IP set, the health checks is a service that Rancher offers which monitors each and every one of the containers to check whether it's, uh, it's crashed and we can say whether we want to restart it or not. And as I said before, the next thing that I'm going to do I need a WordPress now. Let's just get a WordPress here. Okay. That's all we need. Okay. Let's just see if it's working now. One way absurd of guaranteeing your or making the traffic to your control panel is using SSL. Come on, the wireless is a little slow. In the meantime, we can add data. These are a formula that you can parameterize. You can put the parameters there that you want. Name. What does that name mean? It's the name that we're going to uh, we're going to give when we list all the stacks. My, I'm going to call it my WordPress one. And in environment 24, the rest are just default values. And actually, we're going to leave them as they are. Just taking time to start. This is a network problem. Should have had this in 4G. Bueno, os voy adelantando cosas para que no. Okay. Let's progress. One of the obvious problems of uh, organizing a web service is, okay, you can have four machines, three or 28. Where do I write my DNSs? I don't know if you've realized that. I've got 25 machines or 25 VPs. Where do I write the DNS? By default, uh, virtually all uh, those templates that have Rancher ha have a balancer for a port which goes service to service. So you need to know where the port is to write it down. So if you want to start this, the next thing you have to do after looking at the WordPress and after adding WordPress is to see how we can make this more dynamic, how we can manage dynamic services, and how dynamic we want to tag them. If I put on a service a tag, I need to put a name, a name in a domain, and this way we can separate one thing from another. Oh, this network is so slow. Sí, mi móvil se llama Archiduque y es un señor. Es un señor como pocos hay. ¿Estamos? Uno de los problemas que puede pasar es cuál es. Another problem that you can have is that when everything starts And in the meantime, let's do something. WordPress. I don't know where I'm going to deploy it. This is so slow. Got any questions? Uh, in the meantime, I can answer them because this is obviously taking a long time.
ven puntuales. A ver, sí. Question. Yeah, this is what I said I was going to do and I should have done. Thank you for the question, which we didn't hear. You can communicate in the same way. Well, this is probably what's happening to me, and that's what's going so slowly. Let's copy it again and see what happens. If not afterwards, if you want a distributed NFC by distributed public networks, then things are different. This is probably taking a lot longer than it normally would do. I'm going to change uh, browser, see if that helps. Esperando a Rancher. Waiting for Rancher, that's the new title of my talk. I'm just getting a bit nervous because it's not working. Look at all the rubbish that's appearing. Incredible. Let's look at IP private, private IP. I'm going to try and change it all and see if it works. If you know a command, just to kill everything, just tell me, because this is going so slow, it's unreal. You don't have to go into Rancher's control panel again. It's only going to ask me for an IP, but we know the private IP. And, and now we're connecting. What machine was this? Do you remember? Vale, nodo 3, vamos con el nodo 3. Sí. ¿Para? Es que no sé, el problema es que no tengo cable de aquí. Que tengo, necesito adaptador. Ya, por eso sí. Si el problema... Ya. Es que los Mac estos nuevos son muy guays, ¿sabes? Y dicen, ¿cable para qué? Pues necesito una cosa de estas, USB-C, Ethernet a USB-C. Sí. Vale, el nodo 2. Siento que os estáis aburriendo más de la cuenta. Vale. Como suelen decirse, esto es IP privada, ¿no? A ver si... Suele decirse cosa del directo y más de verdad no puede ser. Es esta, ¿no? Sí, venga. La última y vamos con el nodo 1. Aquí. Vale. Voy a copiar el comando de crujímelo todo. Crujímelo todo. If config. Vale. 
Ahora para la buena marcha, Rancher debería de ir. Ok, Rancher should now work. Let's see if it does. See what happens. Try with a IP, a rancher IP. Venga. A ver, es que guay. Me voy a crujir el rancher y me voy a quedar más ancho que largo. Ah, no, es que la máquina no contesta. Mira qué bien. O sea, a lo mejor por eso no funciona. Es un detallazo. Mira, ya voy a entrar con este navegador, me vale. Vale, venga, vamos otra vez, infraestructura. Tenemos los nodos. Ok, let's look at the nodes. Mogollón, ¿no? A mí ya Los insultos que digo en voz baja no los oís, ¿no? Que los insultos que digo en voz baja no los oís, ¿verdad? Pues bueno, más que no me los he crujido, pero vamos. Ya. A ver. Vale. La 188. Ese es este. Ah, qué guay, esto no me ha ido. El nodo 3, justamente. Si tenga que ser algo de la red, si no, el error de este que me da. Oh, it had to be something to do with the network, otherwise it wouldn't have given it this, this mistake. Okay, we've done it at last. Don't applaud, because it might suddenly crash. Normally this is more stable, I swear to it. If not very stable. It's distributing everything, the stacks, stacks are being initializing. Let's see if we can deploy WordPress. Let's, yes, let's deploy WordPress again. doesn't even give you time to think. <laughs> Let's see if I can get into other videos. Let's have a look and see how the machine is, just to check that it's not completely full. Shouldn't be. So the CPU's there. Do you see what happened? This is something that's really gone wrong. Of course it won't work because Docker's 
chock a block. You know what the command is to restart the service. I can't remember. So we're not going to be able to do very much by the time Docker dies. Okay, it's starting up again. It, it actually is has given me all sorts of mistakes, but I've never had Docker die on me. Okay, database starting up. If it works, and it works the next three minutes, if not, um, I'll start all over again, because it's embarrassing, especially when I've done this hundreds of thousands of times. When all the services that are working, Roger is still um, will manage it, but it doesn't matter if the master crashes. So what is already up and running will carry on running. They won't be connecting to the masters, but the services won't go down. Let's go to the catalog again. Let's just hope Docker doesn't crash now. Let's try and launch WordPress. There, it creates a stack, and the stack has a unique name. Those are all the services that are already deployed, and now we're building this new stack. If you go inside it, you can see the containers that it has, that all the services that make it up, there you can see it. WordPress, the balancer that I said. We'll start with the machine that it's supposed to start with by default. And when you, and all of you that know that if you play with Rancher, you can make different dependencies between services, and that's what's happening now. It's got this dependency. WordPress has a dependency, so it's starting up in the order. And in the meantime, let's see where the container is with the web interface. The balancer is there in Observer, and the database and the patch is in a different... It actually doesn't matter. So what do we do to make progress? We'll have to put the domain in this machine because we haven't got the balancer. Everything's uh, gone up. But if you look, you can see the icon here. This little icon means it's an entry point. And here, if we click on this, it'll take us directly to the port. Does anybody know why this isn't working? Can anybody tell me? Anybody out there? Because we've put the private IP, that's great. But well, let's call it the equivalent to the, I, the public IP. And I can't remember what it was called, Rancher 2. Droplets, drablets, droplets.
arrancar. El... When I've just started the WordPress. Miréis, ¿qué mierda le está pasando a esto? Madre mía. La base de datos está activa. ¿Qué, qué coño pasa, güey? Parece que me ha mirado un tuerto, hijo de. Pues nada, no vamos a poder hacer esta puta mierda del proyecto un poco. Ahí. Las IPs están bien puestas. The IPs are all in the right place. For some reason, the database starts and then dies. Let's uh, add a stack manually. Who cares? What can, how can we do this manually and, and just make sure that it's not lying to us? Let's go to the different nets. I hate to say this works at home, but it's true. Okay, let's have an Ubuntu. Let's add an Ubuntu. Well, let's launch a net. Let's just create a network. Let's do what WordPress isn't doing. I don't know why WordPress simply won't work, but it won't. So now we have to add a port to be able to connect. And how are we going to do this? We're going to add. And now we're being asked to map routes. Red, Reddit doesn't go by HTTPM, but go, go for a normal. Look, the port is 3.3. Let's just have a look here. If you're here, you can go to the container of the console. Okay, Redis doc. Let's see if we could find it. I can't remember which port 6 is. 6379, that's the one we want. 6379. And let's connect. Let's connect to Redis. To 6379. Give it a name. My load balancer. If we connect this port, in theory there should be no problems. Let's do what we did before. So, we've got Redis in this machine and the balancer in a different one. So, we should be able to connect to where the machine is. So, let's do it. I'm going to get the public IP of that machine. For some reason, this doesn't want to work. I was in node one. I'm going to close where it doesn't work. Fine. The balancer is active. In theory, if we put the IP, but in Berman. Mm -hmm. 
the host is there. Now it, it works. It's a very bad test that you can't see because it's down there, but it's sending and receiving packa packages, and, and now it's connected. Now we have a balancer, and something is now working. The WordPress is not working. But at least uh, one stack is running. The reading is in green because it's it's working. WordPress. Uh, I'm going to just put it away. What else can we do in 57 minutes plus 40 minutes of things that don't, don't work and that I've wasted? Something in the catalog that I can show you. I wanted to show you this with a WordPress, but it doesn't work. I can't do it, everything at the same time. Let's go to my catalog. What we've been doing uh, before that, beforehand, well, it's a catalog. We can add any catalog. I'm going to add another catalog that I have in my GitHub. It's my catalog. And I have more things here. We add this catalog. Let's copy the, the address. To manage catalogs, add. Add a catalog. Excuse myself, uh, I'm getting very nervous now because it's not working properly. So the catalog indicates repository git. So you, in a public or private git, you have to put the authentication before. So it goes to our git, it downloads, and my catalog is named cron. This shouldn't fail. Uh, it's impossible that it can't upload the catalog. I do apologize, but so they do the, well, maybe there's the unstable server by default because they normally. don't manage all this at the same time. I don't even know which one I've installed now. This is not working, and I'm really sorry for that. I'm going to look for a web interface. Let's launch this into power. I'm going to launch two or three more things to see if something works. Guess pilot traffic. Untie. You know what Tido is? Tido is uh, it's for Scrum Scrum wise management. A GitLab. Oh, I'm going to uh, put um, the settings by default. The only one that doesn't work is WordPress, and it's the one I prepared. 
Fantastic. Maybe the machine is right. You see how much time it takes to upload the template, but the problem is with WordPress. It's deploying little things here, where we go from the GitLab. It's deploying when it's downloading the, the image. What is run? A Grafana, the Redis, GitLab, it's uploading. At least there's the ready works. No, WordPress definitely says no. GitLab server. Let's be realistic. Out of what I wanted to show you here, this doesn't work and this doesn't work. There's no way to run it. Either there's a web service that can be up. I'll show it. I'll show it to you. Wait, let's see what I can really show you. I could show you the Let's Encrypt with a web something. I hope it works. It's been started. Uh, now it's been 45 minutes since nothing appeared and nothing works. You've, and you're going to run at my face, to laugh at me. That's why you come here, to laugh at me, because then nothing works. It's been like that for an hour. You're, you're watching that in streaming? Really? And it's real, I mean, it's uh, live streaming. Every, all the nodes have been disconnected. What can I do now? Mira, a tomar por culo, lo voy a hacer con mi paz. I'm going to do it with my pass, with one that I already mounted, something that is already available. It's mine and it works. It's already mounted, but it's the last possibility. This is one that is mounted, it works, and nothing has failed until now. So... I'm going to launch a WordPress here to see what happens. It's personal. It's getting personal. Fucking WordPress. Oh, the, my catalog is here. And it's loading. It, it's loading. Slowly, but it's loading. It's 4G. And I don't have a lot of coverage. Maybe this is not going to work. It's a shame, but this is worrying because this is mine and it's ready. This is worrying me. It, it says it's Loading, okay, but who knows? Let's change the Wi Fi. I'll choose another one. Reload. 
talung. WordPress, ya sabéis. WordPress again, you know. Well, maybe when it's finished, it's going to be so fast. It's horrible, but maybe it will happen when I'm finished. Because WordPress is not running and it's not starting, I'm going to show you my catalog, the one that was in GitHub. Oh, this is fun. This is real fun. At, at last, this is my catalog. You fuckers. I have a sentry, my SQL. What's the difference with the original catalog? This is copy based, but we have additional setting parameters and I have my own templates. For instance, in the database, in the Postgre, everything is tuned and the information. Uh, is going to be kept at local level when NFS. It's an NFS database, but when it's bad, it's not the solution, but if you do it in the local network, if you don't have that millions of concurrent connections, this is quite acceptable. But if you put NFS with a machine and an external volume in just one location, so all the machines are crashing, but you're not losing your database. WordPress is on. Almost. I'm starting to think that there's a problem with a picture in WordPress. Let's see the images. WordPress is fantastic. WordPress to WordPress, This is not stable. Why do we, why do we use WordPress? I'm going to replace it with WordPress 4.8. Maybe the planets have aligned against me. So you have to take care, uh, be careful with the templates. Now, please, a round of applause because I recovered WordPress. It's, it's on. It's on. Bueno, y después de sufrir un poco. After this suffering, an hour and twenty minutes, you have nothing better to do. Okay. I don't know what uh, this does, but now we have the WordPress. It's on. We have this, this, it's running on an IP. We want to run in a service and a domain. First, we're going to see where our WordPress is running, the WordPress balancer. It's running in this machine with the public IP. It's true. Let's go to this DNS. And then we type WordPress, cron.com, and we'll, we'll have the same. Fantastic. We still have the problem. We have to know where the balancer is. Obviously, that's not a good idea. Let's mount a balancer that is called traffic by domain name. It will not be enrouted where it corresponds. It's easy. Traffic. Well, the Ranger 
version of traffic reads labels. So internally, it knows how to enroute it. I'm going to do the demo, because after this, everything will work. Balancers. Let's add. Traffic is in the catalog. Let's take it from the catalog. Traffic. So it's waiting for the instructions. If it wants to load them. Look, this is a mini guide of how it works, settings, configurations, uh, metrics to Prometheus, a lot of things. For you, it's transparent. Let's concentrate on this. Traffic will only be ri ri raised in hosts that you label with tra traffic LB. If you don't have a host with that label, it's not going to be up. Or if you have an interest, it will be up in interest. Internally, it's going to be balanced. If you combine it with a DNS, you can do a round robin. It's quite simple. The two ne next ports, well, the CTP is exposes the services. It's not 8080. It's just 80. We have an option for SSL for the moment, but I'm not going to manage because it's still too early. And the 8443, it's an administrative a ver uh, option for traffic. It gives you information of what you put in there. The nice thing about this is that here, as it, if we take this out, it's 80 the, here. That's it. Launch. And as it's starting, it's going to be called in those servers, in those machines where it's labeled with traffic. I'm going to wait. I don't know where I was. The traffic, well, the service is up, but it's not, it's not running uh, any host. You see? I'm not running a host because you don't have labeled a machine. I'm going to label now this machine. Editing. Label. Traffic. LB. It's updated. It does it every 20 to 30 seconds. The traffic is analyzing the labels and it's going to be up when it corresponds. Whilst it's doing that, let's go to the WordPress. And let's put the labels that traffic told us. Instead of doing the routing and the balancing one by, by one, the traffic is going to do that instead of us. We go to WordPress. Stop. So the balancer, in fact, with the balancer, we want a virtual host. This is the surface, a service, which is called target. It's a target by traffic, and it's going to connect there. What is, is he do, do, doing? It's, uh, We have to tell traffic what is the service and in which port it is listening uh, this service internally. It's, it's 80, the, the number of the port. Labels? We add a label. Which ones? We have it here. Traffic mode. Stack. Domain. Traffic. 
traffic port. Okay. Before pressing. Well, you see traffic, it's working, it's up. I'm going to uh, assure myself that the address is okay. I don't want to forget any labels. I told you that this port for, was for administration of traffic, but by default, well, it's not possible to do that. This is a, a, a small small dashboard or what of what traffic is doing because nothing is labeled yet, but we're going to leave it there. So when we're going to label something, you'll see that very, very rapidly it will appear. Whole level, we have it. We don't want one HTTPS. Boards, labels, r ranger integration. That's what I'm looking for. Our domain. We've got it. The alias. This was missing, so I need to add it. Let's call it WordPress. Now, I want you to see that traffic gets it, and we're going to see the service name that we are using. Updating. And I clicked on update, upgrade. We can edit the images, the parameters, and a lot of more things, and it, it, it rises two containers, the one that is executed, another parallel, in parallel with the new options, and the two are waiting. When you click here, OK, it's upgraded, and the balance, the internal balance has changed, so the one that is in execution is the new one and not the old one. And in case the new version fails, you can do a rollback without losing the service. So it's up updated, apply the changes. We have just one container. Traffic is still running. Maybe this will fail too. So I'm going to get sure that it's traffic enable. Stuck. Meanwhile, it doesn't find it yet. Traffic, board, WordPress. The doma its domain has to go to another through another way. The, the guy who did traffic, he didn't think to expose these stacks in this way, with the stack not corresponding to a domain, but so that you have the HTTP label uh, host with a big name, with a long name. It was devised in a different way. We people, with the users, we we said, okay, that would be great to you to uh, use it in this way. That's why it's been modified. It's not finding it. The traffic version has changed yesterday. <laughs> it has changed.
tapones. No los pongo, pues porque no quiero. Health check. Me entera, esto está corriendo. Bueno, aquí vemos las peticiones que le hemos hecho. Let's, the queries are here. Y el traffic. Está corriendo. Traffic is running. Bueno, pues como tampoco lo va a pillar por lo visto. Well, it, it's not getting it. It's quite complex. In fact, everything is failing. With a, uh, you know, probabilities normally would be, and odds and probabilities will be in my favor now that nothing has worked. But with your demo, these demos that I'm showing, if you wanted to mount the NFS, the distributed NFS. In the catalog, in, in Rancher, you have a service that integrates by default Rancher. It's called Rancher NFS. It installs an agent in each of the machines. And this agent is connected with the server, the NFS server that you choose. And what is this doing when you deploy an application in the catalog, as we are doing it now, when you select the storage, instead of the local, you can select it as, as driver, ranger, NFS, and underneath, ranger is doing this task. In your container, you will see it as local, where everything is distributed, and it's going to NFS. This is the service. You can't, you can't deploy it because it's already deployed. When you deploy it, you can you say the the IP or the name where the machine is running, and then in each host, there's a driver for NFS. If that this driver is doing the caching to have all the machines agreeing and many other functions. And from the interface, if you go to storage, you can manage all the nodes, the network nodes. These are the nodes that are part of this uh, NFS or the, net, the uh, node network of NFS. And here you have the distributed volumes. So it gives you some information about that. When using this, the NFS, if you go to your catalog, this is a difference with the original version. With the volume called driver, you have the local. It's stored in local, the LVS and NFS for Amazon, but you can say an NFS only, and then it creates a distributed volume that is transparent for you. So it's not working. What I'm going to do is say, show you how the templates work. In this one, which I've got in GitHub, and it's got not much relevant information in it, so you can click on a public repository because all the relevant information is in parameters. There, you can see on the right the instructions. And each file has these three little files in it. So you have the different categories. If you want to, uh, you put the categories you want. And the most recent uh, version that you want to see by default, and then you put all the ones that you want. So normally, each number uh, is a software version that we want to map. So in the overall file, what we do is we refer to one of the default setups, uh, and we give it a name. So what have we got in here? We've got 
Rancher Compose and Docker Compose. What it does is it sets up this uh, interface that we've seen. It's as simple as that. And the version that we've got in the general file here, if you want a minimum, here you can do it. And so when you get to questions that the users are, are such as car, password, username, and it's got different types, for example, test, text or list. So here you've got the new numbers, and you see that on the interface, so you get a list. And the same goes here. In Rancher, we say to it, and that's what it becomes. So what do we want? So we do our copy-paste, and it's the same for everything. The description, whether it's necessary or not, a default value, and what else is important? What variables, what we're talking about, what we're going to call them? What one's called a host name, one's a volume driver, etc. So let's go to Docker Compose. And in Docker Compose, it's already been par parameterized. And now, I don't know if you've realized that when we see here, this, this option comes here. So it's very easy to create a general template. I'm not going to have uh, time to do it. So, but so, so you've got the, your hacking environment. You've got whatever you want. What's the only option that you could need? The default password that you give the SSH that you can uh, include in here. You might have an open bus, an open bus eight or nine, and you've got Nexus four or five. So you can choose which ones you want to set up. So Docker Compose, that's the same. So we upload this. And with the catalog that we saw before, off we go. I've got 25 minutes left, and because absolutely everything else has gone wrong, what I'm going to try to do now, even though I'm sure it's not going to work, because everything else hasn't worked, it's going to do assemble something, something, anything. I really don't mind what. Any ideas? Let's uh, do an open bus. Open bus. Set up for a ranger. Open bus service. Database. And right, let's start mapping. Ranger Compose. Let's call it version 001. What question are we going to ask the open bus? Mm. And as we've seen that the traffic doesn't work, let's put the balancer. Open bus balancer. I'll explain what we're seeing here. All of these services that you start in Rancher or an open bus server, if they don't have a health check mechanism, that means that it's not going to work. It's going to be in red, red or yellow. So if you've got no way of checking it, the default policy is to, to start up again, restart, to reboot. And you, um, then you don't know what's happening. So, it's like when we said to Rancher to get the balancer. I'll tell you what it corresponds to in a minute. 
But by default, let's have a look at it here. And we've finished this. Let's move on now to Pops. Just so that we can see it in parallel. The balancer open bus. This is what we want. And the there it is. Uh, and this is the the port we're going to ask. That's where we need it. So let's create a service called Open Bus. And the image of Open Bus. Let's have a look. What sort of image do we want? Bus Docker. That's what it looks like. And what about the environment? No. Doesn't talk you about the environment. Doesn't say anything about the environment in, in the tower. So volumes. I know we're doing a very very simple version, but because everything seems to be going wrong, as you can imagine, I want to be have zero risk. So what's the port for the control panel? 9390, yeah? So you go to filler to control this port, 9390, okay? Port, 9390. Okay. You shouldn't need any more than that. A description here. Get rid of this. I add it to Git. Okay. There, we've got the image. Let's go back to our catalog. And what we now to need to do is just to refresh it. When, of course, when it wants to load. And it gives us a git pool to update. There, we've got it, our open bus service. And what question have we put there, the port? We should have put the label, but I've removed it. Launch. There, you see the balancer deployed as we asked for it. 9390. The open bus, unfortunately, would take a little while. That's the downside. Because what I think it does is, is it updates all the database. But if you go to infrastructure, this is something I actually don't like. What If you're waiting for the open bus, you, when it downloads the image, you, it'll allow you to see the logs. So if you sit, go on, see logs, and there you can see what's happening. But for this, you have to have downloaded first the image. And of all the things that I haven't been able to I'll show you. Let's see if I can show you an NFS. Okay, it's saying let's encrypt. Might even work. Another thing that... 
Another thing that appears in the catalog, which Rancher has, called Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt lifts another stack with, with the, set, the setups that you want. Every three months, when it runs out, it'll renew your certificate. Uh, what do you want that for? Well, if you've got a license, you want some kind of a certificate, email, a certificate. The domains are separated by commas. Another thing that you're perhaps not interested in, but just have a look at this. One of the things to choose CloudFred is something that you can so you've got Let's Encrypt and it'll manage it for you automatically. I'm not going to do it because I've already done it, but I wanted to show it to you. When you run this, it'll create a, create a, a Let's Encrypt stack. Why have I got them separated? Because I've got a let in, Let's Encrypt service per domain. So when you want to add a new domain, you have to stop the service, start it again. This one, for example. Look at the setup action. Production. This is uh, the DNS server. But look. There you've got it. Copy, paste. And, and everything that I've asked for, I've asked for the certificates, that's all. That's great. So then how do I use these SSL certificates? Let's go to the stack. If you no look, these stacks is a logical grouping together of all our infrastructure because I've got everything functioning. I've got NFS and it's all working. I've got, you can see the NF. I've got my PayPal server, my Rabbit server, my Trafficker, which isn't working. Nothing's working. I've got WordPress, which seems to have collapsed once again. But I've got like little pieces in a logical order. And afterwards, I, what I do is I connect them all up together. So I like to put in at one stack all the balances, normally because Everything is then ordered. Oh, oh, if you look at the balancer here, either per machine or by domain, however you want it, it's the same IP. I'm just getting all the balances ready. And in this case, I've got in one machine a, a balancer that does some things, another that does others. It's giving us a different service, OK? So, how come we set up the Let's Encrypt certificate? When we add a balancer, I've, I've shown you how to do balancer, yes? This is a classic balancer. These are the ports that we're using. This is the URL, HTTPS, and the HTTP. And here, we add the hosting router that we want. And in my case, it says OK. Open for the public, port 4, port 3, it goes to service, where I've got everything, and then it goes to the port. And the port's 9,000 without SSL. It's the balancer that puts the SSL. And where is the SSL? If you go down here, the certificates that manage Let's Encrypt, there, are allowed by Rancher. If you want to go to certificates, or you can go down to infrastructure, certificates, and as let's encrypt as it works, it leaves you a certificate here, a public one. And you can see here two subdomains. And here I've got six. And it gradually updates, adds one with all the domains. But they, it does it itself. That's what's so good about this. All you have to do is when you look here on 443, check the um, corresponding certificate. Uh, 
vas aquí a certificados y le das import. And then you go to certificates again and import. Let's see certificates. Paste and that's it. Copy paste. Whatever you're ready for. I know that the demo is not working as it should do, but let me just see if I can give you an idea. And then Docker Ray, this is correct. Quite, uh, quite normal. Have you ever done a Docker register? Docker register is just an image in version 2, which is without SSL but uses the uh, 5000 port, but your Docker client, your local Docker client, won't work without SSL. You can do a Docker push to your private server, but if you don't have an SSL, it'll say it won't do it. You can do a hub. But if you put a certificate which isn't valid either, it won't accept it. So the, the, the only thing that you can do is add a valid certificate if you want to have your own doc image server. And that is a very simple way of doing it. And I'm going to use this for registry. Here we've got an NFS volume internally, and it maps. But I don't know if you realize here there's, there's no router because it uses the rancher driver and internally when we've shown you all the distributed names. I've got them all now, all my images. I've got my, set, uh, my server in NFS, but it's completely transparent, so it doesn't matter. And it's really comfortable. Let's hope the open bus is finished. If we're lucky, of course not. No. Let's see if I can at least download an image. Because I haven't even downloaded the image. Because an open bus image is like 2.8 gigas, which isn't um, by no means chicken feed. Let's encrypt is there. Let's go to the command line. Rancher has an, an FLI. And we can automate things. The, my idea, idea is to do this demo. And with all the environment, what I wanted to do was for the script to create a domain, a stack, and using traffic it would map this domain directly to the open bus. And to do this automatically, it's like I said at the beginning, if there are four auditors, we're going to have auditor one, auditor two, auditor three, auditor four. And so you can, each maps its start. And as unfortunately nothing is working, I'm going to show you the commands of how this works. To create a domain, there's a library, so I've written a script, and you put the domain name, and I know this works, and of course it's not going to work today, as you already know. How, how does this little script work? It's very simple. Can you see the bottom here? Otherwise, if not, I'll change.
Este, este es el script que subirá ahora después. ¿vale? This is the script that we're going to put there. There's only one dependency here, yes. which is Clubflare. Clubflare. Here you can see what I'm typing in and what happens. Ya está. Entonces, hacéis ahora sí. Cloudflare script. Menos H. Tenemos dos acciones. There, we've got two actions. We can either create a subdomain or remove it. That's all we need, really. It will do it, we'll create it, but it'll fail, you'll see. This will definitely fail. Okay. This wasn't the fault that I was expecting. What fault? It's a pretty horrible fault. But because it gives us this fault because we haven't had any authentication credentials. So, for this to be as taken seriously, it's taken from the credential environment variables. You have to be careful with what you're doing. So the credentials have to have this name. I didn't put this name there. It was the library that did that. That's the username and the club for AP key. So it's important here. I've given you the example. Of course, I've shown you the example. We load it. And you'll see, should create a domain. It hasn't said anything, so it should have created the domain. It was just a statistical matter. This had to go right. If you now look at the IPP. It's just a stupid little piece of script. But scripting all this is kind of useful. There you go, to, to manage your domains. What do we want to do now? What we want is to dis deploy a new stack, whichever one we fancy. So how do we create a new stack? Rancher, to download, well, your rancher, you go down to the bottom, and here you can see it says CNI on the right. Can you see that? Well, you can leave Rancher Compose, but you don't want Rancher Compose, you want Rancher CLI. They're binary. It's in Golem, so it should all go okay. All right, that's it. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to go and see where I've got my binary. There it is. What can we do here? Command line, virtually anything, really. We can install stacks. We've got all the stacks there. You got them? And we can show the services which isn't the same as the stacks. Uh, remember, a stack can have many services. You can see the state, it's healthy, what's image. What's this? This is thought out because any balances that you've got deployed, if you want to deploy an image with a, a Macaulay with SSH, but the SSH can't be balanced. It can't be balanced by domain. You can't do it with pep.com. So obviously the machine where we want to put it needs to have a port. I'm going to stick it so that you can see it. I just want you to have a look at it. Here, what we did was find 
in the machine. It's a balancer, a free port. And once we've got a free port, then what do we do? In our catalog, as we see in the open bus, we've just put a question is. The question was, tell me the port. You remember? So we said, okay, this is going to be the port. But everything has to be automated. So how do we deploy something from the catalog? If you just write catalog, it'll show you everything that you've got in the catalog. All the things that you've got in the catalog. So let's go back and deploy the open bus again. For our catalog. Fijaos qué guay, que yo te todas mis demos con WordPress, ¿eh? Todas. Entonces, aún así voy a lanzarlo para que... Sí. Porque se, eh, si os acordáis de cuando intentamos lanzar WordPress... Hay I don't know if you remember. That's why there's all sorts of words that, or questions that we asked before launching. And in the case of what we did with the open pass, you remember the port that we asked for? I don't know what's happened to WordPress. Community WordPress. Ah, vale. ¿Sabéis lo que nos está diciendo? Que ya tenemos un sitio, creo, que nos está diciendo esto. Ha llegado al punto que. Lo que nos debería es preguntar las variables. Vale, ahora. No, no sé si lo veis aquí. Que pregunta public port. Que son las variables que tenía. Public port. You can see public port. User, but if we're scripting, this, it's senseless that it asks us anything. So for that reason, they've got an option here that says go back directly to response. With the option of minus a, and you give them a response. What sort of format do the text files have? Variable name equals value. It's very simple. So you've got to have all the ones that it asks for, otherwise it'll stop. And with this, I think we've nearly finished this workshop. Okay. Y ya está. Entonces, en teoría, in theory, you can say, okay, I'm deploying, I have no, I have no more questions. It hasn't asked any question, it's deployed. Now I have no time. I wanted to mix the fact that if this is a, a domain and automatically I, I install and I launch a template with the parameters I choose. And with a click, I create the whole environment. And with another click, I can uh, delete it. What else? I'm really sorry for this uh, disturbance. Thank you very much.